Hello everybody. In this Python tutorial, we're going to go over HVplot. HVplot is a high-level plotting API for the PyData ecosystem, built on Holoviews. The PyData ecosystem has a number of core Python data containers that allow users to work with a wide array of data types, including Pandas, Xarray, Dask, StreamZ, Intake, GeoPandas, and NetworkX. For most of the examples, in this tutorial we're going to use Pandas. If you would like examples using any of these, you can go to the documentation at hvplot.pyviz.org. Also, note that this tutorial builds heavily on our previous tutorials on Bokeh and Holoviews. It's not necessary to watch those tutorials, but it can be beneficial. For more information and download instructions on hvplot, you can go to python.org then go to the Python package index and search for hvplot. Let's go ahead and jump right into our examples. For the imports, we're going to use hvplot.pandas, pandas, numpy, and the Vega datasets. For our first example, let's go over how to create a simple line chart. We're going to go ahead and use this data frame here that looks like this. To create this line plot, we go ahead and we reference the data frame. Then we use dot hvplot. We go ahead and put in the x and y data and we specify the kind. Now notice that we put x and y in quotes. We also go ahead and put the plot kind in quotes. In this case, line. Can you run it? And you can see here we get our interactive bokeh type plot where you can move it and you can zoom in and out. So this is just one way that you can create a line plot with hvplot. Here we have another example. In this case, we reference the data frame dot hvplot dot line. And then we go ahead and put in the x and y data. If you ever have any issues creating your plots like this, you can always try using this method. Let's go ahead and run it and we get our line plot. In this example, we're going to go ahead and add some formatting. So we reference our data frame .hvplot.line. We go ahead and put in the x and y data, and here we've gone ahead and specified the width and the height. We've given the chart a title. We've specified the y limit, 0 to 1. So you can see 0 to 1. We've gone ahead and labeled the x and y axis here and here. And if you would like to see a grid on your plot, you can set grid to true. If you would ever like to see a help screen for your plot, you can use hvplot.help and put in the type of plot you'd like to see the help screen for. When you run it, then your help screen will pop up and then you can see your parameters, what the plot will return, generic options, and your style options. Next, for this example, we're going to go over how to create a line plot with multiple lines. We're going to go ahead and use this data frame here that looks like this. Now, one way to create this line plot with multiple lines is to move this X column to the index. So to do that, you can reference your data frame dot set index and put in the column name. So when we run that, it's going to look like this. So you'll notice that the X column is now the index. Okay, so to create this plot, we reference the data frame. Dot set index. We go ahead and we move that X column over to the index. Dot HV plot. And in this case, we've set the title, the Y axis label, and of course the kind is line. Let's run it. And you can see we get our line plot with multiple lines. In this example, we're doing basically the same thing. However, we create it in a slightly different way. So here we go ahead and we reference the data frame. And that would be the data frame that looks like this. So in this case, we're not setting the index. Then we use hvplot. We go ahead and put in the x and y data. And notice for the y, we put those columns in a list, y1, y2, y3. 
here, here, and here. And we assign line to the kind. Let's run it. And we get our line plot. Now let's go over some bar chart examples. For this first example of a bar chart, we're going to use this data frame here. And to create it, we use the data frame.hv plot. We put in x and y. The kind is bar. And if you'd like to rotate the labels, you can use the rotate argument and set that to the degrees that you would like. Next, for this example, we're going to go over how to create a grouped bar chart. We're going to use this data frame here that looks like this. We've gone ahead and we've set the index to be the year column. So the data frame will go from this to this. To create the group bar chart, we go ahead and reference the data frame, dot set index, we put in year, then we use dot hv plot, the kind is bar, and we set stacked to false. And here we have our group bar chart, and this is really pretty cool because this takes very little code to create somewhat of a complicated chart. Now in this example, we've created a stacked bar chart. And you'll notice that the only difference is that for the stacked argument, we set that to true. Moving on, let's go over how to create some scatter plots. We're going to go ahead and use the cars data set from the Vega data sets that looks like this. To create a simple scatter plot, go ahead and use the data frame.hv plot, put in x and y, and assign scatter to the kind. For our color bar over here, we're going to use the horsepower. Let's run it, and we get our scatter plot. Once again, this is very cool because you're using very little code, and you get a very nice looking chart. Now you can also create scatter plots where you can create subgroups with one of the data elements. In this case, we're going to use the iris data set, and we want to assign a different color to each of the species, with those species being Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So in this example, we use the iris data frame.hv plot, we assign our x and y, and to get the different colors for the different species, we assign species to the by argument. And the kind is scatter. Next, using hv plot, you can also create hex bin plots. And hex bin plots can be a useful alternative to scatter plots if your data is too dense to plot each point individually. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and use the diamonds data set from Kaggle. That looks like this. And what we're going to do is to compare the scatter plot to the hex bin plot. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is to create our layout. So we go ahead and we reference the data frame.hv plot. We put in x and y, and the first part of the layout will be the scatter plot. Now, if you'd like to join plots together in one space, you can use the plus operator. And since this continues on the next line, we want to continue that join, and to do that, we use the backslash. Okay, so here we have our scatter plot. We're going to join that together with our hex bin plot. And we want this laid out with one column. Instead of side by side, we want the scatter plot on top of the hex bin plot. So we go ahead and we use the layout variable dot cols for columns, and we want one column. And note that we have several examples of this in the hollow views tutorial. Okay, so we have our scatter plot here, and here we have our hex bin plot. And you'll notice that the hex bin plot is good about telling us where the data is very dense. And you can see that's here. And over here we have our color bar. And you can actually even drag your cursor across to see the count where the data is very dense. When we drag the cursor on the yellow, right there, there's almost 8,000 data points. Whereas in the scatter plot, you're not able to see that. Okay, moving on. Using HV plot, you can also create stacked area charts. We're going to use this data frame here. And to create the stacked area chart, we use the data frame.hv plot. We put in x. And for the y, we're going to assign the y's inside of a list. 
for the kind, we assign area, and we set stacked to true. Let's run it. And we get our stacked area chart. Here we have an example of how to create a histogram. For this example, we're going to use our cars data frame that we created earlier, .hvplot .hist for histogram. We want to see a histogram for the horsepower, so we put that in here. And then we set the bins, in this case 50. Let's run it. And if you'd like more bins, then you can do that. You can also create kernel density estimates to see distributions for your data. For this example, we're going to use this data frame here. Then, to create your KDE plot, you use your data frame, .hvplot .kde. And we want to use each column of this data frame, so we put those in a list and assign them to Y. And run it. And you can see we get our KDE plot. Another cool thing you can do with hvplot is you can create a scatter matrix. And it's quite simple to do. All you have to do is use hvplot.scattermatrix. Go ahead and put in your data frame. And if you would like different colors or subgroups for one of your data elements, you can assign that to C. Let's run it. And we get our scatter matrix. Next. HVPlot allows you to create tables with your data. Now one use for this would be to quickly see your data in table form and then be able to sort it. And to sort the data, all you have to do is to click on the header. So for example, for the yield, you can see here we've sorted it from largest to smallest. And you can also take these tables and put them next to your charts so you can see a visual representation of the data alongside with the data. For our next example, let's go over how you can overlay chart elements. To overlay chart elements, you use the star operator. So here we've created our data frame, and we've gone ahead and created a bar chart and a line chart, and we've overlaid the line chart onto the bar chart. So here we've created the bar chart, and to overlay the line chart, we just use the star, and then we create the line chart. So here you can see the bars, and here you can see the line. Now let's go over a couple examples of how you can create interactive charts with widgets. For this example, we're going to use the Gapminder data frame from the Vega datasets that looks like this. So one easy way to get a dropdown to make your chart interactive is to use code like this. So we use our Gapminder data frame .hvplot. We assign the x and the y and we assign the country to the group by. And that will give us our dropdown here. And for this example, we've assigned line to the kind. So on the x-axis, we have the year, and the y-axis, we have the life expectancy. Now this would be the life expectancy for Afghanistan. If you'd like to change it, just go over here to your dropdown. And it will update accordingly to whatever country you choose. Okay. You can also use hvplot with IPy widgets. So we're going to use this data frame here, which is the stocks data frame from the Vega datasets. If you'd like more information on IPy widgets, please feel free to check out my tutorial on IPy widgets. So to create this chart, the first thing we do is we create our widget. Then we go ahead and we create a function that will create the chart and then we create an interaction between the widget and the function to give us our interactive chart. So let's run it. Here for the stocks, we have the date and the price. Now if you'd like to see a different company, you just go up here and you can change that. And the chart will update accordingly to whatever you change the company to. Okay? Now finally, we have an example of how you can use hvplot with maps. In this example, we've gone ahead and we have imported GeoViews. And this is a separate package that would most likely need to be downloaded, and you can get download instructions from the Python package index. So, for more information on GeoViews, once again, you can go to python.org 
go to the Python package index and search for GeoViews. Now for this example, we're going to go ahead and use the airport's data frame from the Vega datasets. To get our map tile, we use geoviews.tilesources.esri. And we want to overlay our airports as points. So to do that, we use the star for the overlay. Then we use the airport's data frame points. We go ahead and we put in our longitude and our latitude. We set the geo argument to true. We want our points to be yellow with an alpha transparency level of 0.2. We want the map to have a height of 500. And then we go ahead and set our X and Y limits here. So when we run this, you can see we get our map with all of the airports as points. Pretty cool. Okay. That's all we have for this tutorial. We will be doing many more Python tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.